Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to argue that moving forward the left should start focusing on organizing tenants, also known as renters, people who pay rent to landlords, especially for the duration of COVID-19. Throughout this video I'm going to be quoting labor organizer Jane McAlevey a lot, beginning with her definition of the word organizing and how she distinguishes between organizing, mobilizing, and advocacy. But so advocacy, you write a check, um, you pay some lawyers, you pay some pollsters, and some people are hired and somewhere they're just off trying to lobby a bill um, in your provincial capital or in your federal capital or something like that. Um, but there's no pretense that anyone's actually been involved in it. So that's advocacy. And I think it can make some gains, um, some of which are even good. There's lots of lawyers involved, there's lots of public relations people involved, um, and not all things that advocates do is bad, by the way. We just need to be clear what it is, which is it's actually not teaching anyone uh, how to actually make transformational change in their own lives. And then the point of real confusion for me, and what I say is my obsession in the book, and it is a bit my obsession, uh, is that I think in the last 25 years or so, certainly in the trade union sector in the United States, which is most of what I was looking at, I think what got perfected was something called mobilizing. So mobilizing relies on staff. They may not be professional lawyers or professional pollsters where they are in the advocacy model. They might even call themselves organizers, which is what gets really confusing out in the world. Like many people who say, I'm an organizer, when I get deep into that discussion, uh, actually, no, you're not an organizer. You're a mobilizer in my mind because what you're doing is you're not expand, you're not changing the hearts and minds. You're not helping people themselves come to a transformative moment where they realize these are the bad people, these are the forces of good. This is where I'm going to stand for the rest of my life and fight. That's what organizing is. Organizing is getting people who are not involved in our movement, who don't self-identify as being involved in a movement, and helping them come to their own conclusion, which is a super important concept, like helping people come to their own conclusions about what's right and what's wrong in the world, and about who's making their lives miserable and what the solution is. One simple way to think about McAlevey's really key, really crucial distinction between mobilizing and organizing is just to think about who's in your bubble and who's not. Here's everyone in your bubble. This is everyone who agrees with you politically and based on this political agreement, they're all willing to take some kind of action to advance their beliefs. Sign a petition, attend a rally, vote in some kind of way. For the most part, women's marches and the BLM protests have been mobilizing. The organizers who put them together tapped into networks of people who already agreed with each other, largely relying on social media sites such as Facebook, got them to turn out to hold signs and banners and make speeches with messages demonstrating that they all politically agreed with each other about something. Let's briefly look at what's called the spectrum of allies. You have active allies, passive allies, neutrals, passive opponents, active opponents. What mobilizing seeks to do is to get active supporters to get as many passive supporters off the couch as possible for turnout and to take some kind of action together. But the goal is never to effectively get neutrals, passive opponents, or active opponents on board. Organizing, on the other hand, with McAlevey's definition, isn't just about focusing on the people over here. The whole point is to expand this base of support as broadly as possible, getting as many people over here converted into supporters. While this may seem really hard, if not impossible, it's not. McAlevey comes from the labor organizing world, where you can't authorize a strike without getting 90% or more of workers on board with the strike. Workplaces tend to be like tiny crush sections of America, where roughly a third of people are kind of liberal, a third are kind of conservative, and a third are just kind of neutral or in the middle. So it's really never easy to get 90% of people in a workplace to agree to go on strike. So how do you get to 90% plus unity in a workforce where it's the employer themselves who hire people? It's like a cross section of America. We have black nurses, we have white nurses, we have a handful of Latino nurses. But we have a thousand nurses who, at that point, their only relationship is that they come to work together. They don't have a shared political identity. They're not being united. They don't, you know, they're not showing up at meetings because they're longtime Facebook friends or because they tweet with each other. Um, and we've got a problem in the campaign because we've got a very significant unit, significant in size. There's 66 nurses in a unit called telemetry. And the telemetry unit 
ran the anti-union campaign during the union election. In this story, she tells about how traditional labor organizing methods flipped tons of nurses within that department from an active opponent position to an active support position. Okay, so what does this have to do with tenant organizing? I'll get back to that in a minute. But the point of this distinction between mobilizing and organizing, to me, is going to remain really vital for the duration of our political lives. Of all the massive issues we're facing, from climate change to police brutality, prison industrial complex, unaffordable health care, crumbling infrastructure, I mean, just pick a fucking issue. We need a lot more people on board fighting very actively to make this world a better place. Mobilizing just doesn't get new people involved. It gets the same people who are already involved doing the same ineffective shit over and over and over. What I understand about organizing is I have to wake up every morning and make a plan to talk to the workers who aren't talking to me. I have to make a plan in the morning to make sure that someone is talking to all the workers who won't come to our meetings, don't talk to us, aren't in our social media feed, and are probably leaning either undecided or anti-union in the context of the union campaign um, or a strike vote or a contract fight. Um, and I have to wake up in the morning if I'm doing community-based organizing and make a plan for how to reach the precincts, the neighborhoods, and the blocks where no one's coming to meetings. Organizing is about finding the people who are not engaging with us and helping them, helping clarify the two sides, as I like to call it. Like, there are two sides. All right, I'm almost at tenant organizing. Before I get there, so what McAlevey is talking about specifically is workers at jobs, and in particular, strategic sectors, and getting higher union density within workplaces and across industries. Why? Because... What's the power structure of the analysis in this country that leads us to strategic decisions? And I'm gonna argue we have to do way more energy in the economic arena to fight people like Donald Trump and the Koch brothers and the backers that support him. The courts are gone. With Kavanaugh's appointment, Gorsuch, forget it. Forget lawsuits, it's just not gonna work anymore. It's gonna to get to the Supreme Court and we're gonna lose. So courts, out of the picture. Uh, we learned from the 2018 elections and the 2016 elections with gerrymandering. We got red states, we got blue states, we got a very complicated electoral math. We do have to do elections for sure, but they're just, it's harder. It's way harder to win big elections than it used to be. So what we do need to do way more of in addition to elections is fighting in the economic arena and that means strikes. We need to be able to strategically disrupt corporations in this country. Okay, and so her theory of change is that massive economic disruptions through strikes specifically is at this point a more effective strategy to get the significant wins for the vast majority than focusing entirely on electoral politics and the courts. So let's just spend all of our leisure time, for those of us who have any of it, organizing workers, right? Well, sure, if you actually have a job right now and you like what McAlevey is saying and you want to organize your workplace, definitely fucking do it. Especially if you are in what she and others call a strategic sector. Like, for example, healthcare, because there's a fuck ton of healthcare workers in giant hospitals and communities trust hospital workers and they can't be outsourced or automated, at least not for now. And the idea here is, again, not to do flimsy advocacy to ask for these little tiny policy changes or whatever, or shallow mobilizing on Twitter or just talking to the people who already agree with you. It's to build massive majorities through base building and organizing and to use labor as the primary vector through which you get to new people. But the reason I'm making this video about tenant organizing instead of labor organizing is because especially now that we're in this COVID era and will eventually be in a post-COVID era, organizing tenants may actually be somewhat easier and more important than organizing workers. And I mean, tenants are workers 99% of the time, but, well, let's just take a look at what I mean. So with workplace organizing, as I pointed out in my video, How to Unionize a Workplace, you have to do a lot of mapping. You typically start with your physical workplace, and you also map social relationships and power dynamics and things like that. But in the COVID era, millions of people either don't have jobs anymore at all, and therefore have nothing to map, or are working remotely, which also gives them nothing to map. So if you only know your coworkers through names within Slack workspaces or occasional Zoom meetings, the conditions for labor organizing may not be impossible for you, but they're now very difficult. But where you live, you can map the living shit out of everything. In fact, if you think of an apartment building like a workplace, you can begin to apply labor organizing concepts almost exactly. And more importantly, people in big apartment buildings throughout working class neighborhoods especially are all people who are generally outside of your bubble. These are people who probably are not already unified within their buildings, across their buildings, across neighborhoods, 
across entire cities. And similar to unorganized workers in a workplace, they probably mistake themselves to just be separate individuals with no commonality and no reason to become unified. But when unified, tenants can achieve a lot, just like when workers in a workplace are unified. The McAlevey idea, which completely isn't her idea, she's just like the best person at explaining these ideas at this point, is a larger vision leftists have pretty much always had, which is that if you get really large scale workplace organizing, like not just in one workplace, but tons of workplaces under the same employer within entire industries, yeah, one big union. With all of this unification, and after a fuck ton of political education, you like overthrow capitalism, I guess. But what I've been thinking is that imagine trying to do the same thing on a regional level with apartment buildings and neighborhoods. One apartment, then another, a whole neighborhood. You link neighborhoods across neighborhoods. You have tenant and neighborhood councils. Oh shit, well yeah, so this is called Tank. Existing avenues for combating rising rents, slumlord behavior, and evictions are channeled through nonprofit organizations. These types of organizations, while a critical resource for tenants, do not necessarily challenge the larger structural dilemma that we face, the subjugation of housing under capitalism. And uh, so this isn't really my idea. Tenants organizers have been working on this for a really long time. Tenants unions from San Francisco to Los Angeles, Philadelphia to Omaha, New York to Washington, D.C. This is what tenants unions are currently working on, similar to what labor unions are working on. So if you think of yourself as a leftist and you rent from a landlord, meaning you're a tenant, and you rent a studio or a one-bedroom apartment, you live in a big apartment building, a fourplex, a duplex, even a cottage or a single-family home, you're part of a massive network of other tenants who most likely are not yet organized. They're outside of your bubble. And if we actually want to decommodify housing more generally, we need a massive movement of tenants to... Well, okay. So, my recommendation to you, if you agree that we need to focus more on tenant organizing, is to start with the Autonomous Tenants Union Network by going here. See if there's a tenants union near you, and if there's not, then learn how to form a tenants union where you live. Thanks, patrons. Worker Guy, Whoop Ditch, Will M, Grosthetics, Mikkel VL, Monk, Rodrigo, Sam, Zach, Isabel, Abdulali, Katie, Street Sweeper, Street Sweeper, Diane Prado, Brianne, Lauren, Garbage Possum, Space Commune, Ashley Altman, Paulo Ruiz, Ulrich Volker, Anderson, Jamie Smith, Labor Cal, Fiona, L, Chin Rufu, Sam La, Ch Sam La Chance, Jen Garcia, Sahil Shah, Chaotic Capybara, The Appalachian Left, Dirt Knight, Halim Aura, Leo Samalati, Bryden Beck, Lauren Dale, Noah, Asmel Fede, Ace, Super Arjuna, but Waltz and Kia. Oh. 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 Oh.